Okay. Can we take a moment to uh, center and ground ourselves? Some breathing. Hanumai. Hanuaku. Hanumai. Hanuaku. Hanumai. Hanuaku. E ho mai ka ike mai luna mai e. O na me agunad o eu. O na me le. E ho mai. E ho mai. E ho mai e. Ho mai ka ike mai luna mai e. O na me agunad o eu. O na me le. E ho mai. E ho mai. E ho mai e. O mai ka ike mai luna mai e. O na me agunad o eu. O na me le. E ho mai, e ho mai, e ho mai, e ho mai, e ho mai. Okay, so mahalo nui to everyone for joining us here today and being in this space with us. Uh, this webinar is the second in our Ka'au learning series with Tangaro. My name is Lilinoi Kohikawa, and I'm a population health specialist with Papo Lolokahi, focusing on addictions and behavioral mental health. And before we go ahead and get started today, I just have a few housekeeping notes. Um, today's session will be recorded, and we're also live streaming to Facebook. Please note as well that we're using the Zoom webinar feature, so this does limit your ability to turn on your camera or to unmute, but we can unmute you if um, you have a question or something. Please also feel free to post any questions that you have in the Q&A panel that you'll find at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And we'll leave some time to answer those toward the, toward the end of today's session, some talk story. The chat will also be monitored throughout our time. And if you have not yet filled out the pretest, which uh, came in some of the reminder emails, please do so now and I'll drop the link in the chat. Um, you will only need to fill out this pretest once, um, the first at the beginning of this, the series. Um, if you've already filled it out, you don't need to fill it out again. This training is also approved by the Alcohol and Drug Ab Abuse Division for CSAC, CCS, CPS, CCJP, CSAP, and Social Worker Continuing Education Credit Hours. Following the webinar, you'll be asked to complete an evaluation. And if you could please take a moment to complete that evaluation, it really does help us to improve and expand our programming opportunities. And for those wishing to claim their continuing education credit hours, the evaluation will connect you to our attendance verification. And upon completion of that form, you'll receive an email certifying your attendance and credit hours. And this will serve as your credit letter for licensure. This series is co-sponsored by Papo Lalokahi and the Hawaii State Alcohol and Drug Abuse Division. Mahalo nui again to everyone for joining us. So this series is aimed at developing a deeper relationship with Ka'au, our stories, and it's our hope that you'll be able to not only utilize these tools to understand your own life's journey, but to also learn to utilize these tools in professional practice. And Ka'au offers us this glimpse into time-honored wisdom of kupuna and shares with us this way to really understand the archetypes that we encounter every day along our own life's journey. So for those we serve, this introspection and connection to the ancestral realm um, could really provide an invaluable insight into helping, helping them to understand and embrace their own pathways toward healing. So for this journey, we are incredibly fortunate to have Tangaro as our guide. And Tangaro received his Bachelor of Arts in Hawaiian Studies from UH Hilo, his Master's in Education from Heritage College, Washington, and his Doctor of Philosophy in Interdisciplinary Studies from Union Institute and University of Ohio.
He graduated as a hula instructor with the title Uniki Pumu Hula from Halao Ke Kuhi in 2007. He's a professor of Hawaiian studies at Hawaii Community College and, de and delivers the Associate of Arts degree in Hawaiian studies with a hula focus. By using the Halao, uh, the Halao Foundation to teach the hula degree program, he established Unu Pupu Pupu, the Halao Hula for Hawaii Community College over 10 years ago. Tangaro and Unukupu Kupu have performed worldwide, worldwide, including at the 2012 Smithsonian Folklife Festival in Washington, DC, the 2012 International Union for the Conser Conservation of Nature Congress in Jeju, Korea, and at the World of Shadow Theater in Stuttgart, Germany. Tangaro serves as director of the Kauhale Academic Village, um, described as an ohana of administrators, faculty, staff, students, and their families at Hawaii and the Hawaii Island community that contributes measurably to the success of Hawaii Community College's mission and outcomes. Belina Mai, Etangro, and Mahalo for joining us today, and I'll go ahead and turn things over to you. Oh, hilo aina ho, lule hua na le hua mai tano e o uuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
in intersection with those stories, looking at the archetypes of Ka'au mythology, the big stories. Now, this is not just little stories. Ka'au are huge stories, stories that allow us, um, they're so huge that when we, that um, they reflect a nation, a race, they can reflect a family, a tribe. Um, and many of our small dreams are actually derivative of the larger dreams. And so Ka'au is a great platform for us not to only know about ourselves and our inner worlds and our inner thinkings, but for us to become better global citizens, Ka'au allows us to understand how other people think. And Ka'au allows us to realize that there are many truths at the table. There's not just one truth. And there are many truths at the table. And then how do we, how do we begin to use that the many truth system to, to get to a healthier place and create healthier lifestyles. And so I want to say thank you to Edith for not just being a steward of just teaching a dance and a chant, which is also very valuable, but also teaching us how to not be afraid of our culture, how to investigate the culture. If the culture is going to survive, it has to make sense to us or else we'll, we just become a, you know, we just inherit a legacy that makes no sense. You know what it's like her inheriting a legacy that makes no sense and you spend your life polishing it up. That's a lot of wasted energy. So we have a beautiful legacy of storytelling here in Hawaii and we want to make it work for us. So I want to mahalo Lili Noi Kawahi Kawa who is a student of ours here at Hawaii Community College. So she's talk about institutional learning outcomes. She's graduated from our program, our hula program, and she's gone to Manoa. She's doing all these beautiful things for the community. And she's bringing along her associate's degree information into this world. So, you know, she's really one of our, our stellar kind of outcomes where she's um, bringing what worked for her into a larger consideration and hoping that it will work for you. Actually, we do know it's going to work for you. Um, I do want to apologize for not being able to um, be here last week, or the week before that, the first session. Um, you know, our family just had a little scare. Um, you know, the COVID-19 got a little too close that we were comfortable. So we just had to like kind of hunker down and, and just get tested and we're all good. We're all healthy. But I did know that um, you, you still attended and you even watched the video that we were able to share with you. That video is for, you know, it's part of the um, university's um, commitment to indigenize our system, um, to better serve our communities, to make sure everybody's stories is being represented in the processes and the policies and the curriculum programs that we build. And that our the, the diverse values that we um, host on our campus are reflected in ways that, that will advance humanity and in, in advance our um, living alongside and living within the natural environments. So um, that video is for you. You can access it anytime. There's also some um, testimonial videos that support the Ka'au. So please look at that because that's where we're heading. At one point, we don't want you just memorize the processing and, and deliver. This process requires that you are in it. Yeah, so it's like if you're gonna learn hula, you gotta learn hula from you wanna learn hula from somebody that actually knows how to hula. Uh, if you're gonna learn half a pound poi, uh, you wanna make sure that the teacher has some kind of credential, some kind of experience in pounding poi. And so if we're gonna to begin to use traditional storytelling, the ka'au, the large stories, as a way of bringing clarity to who we are, where we're gonna go, and how we're gonna get there. And, um, and how we're gonna to contribute to a better world, then uh, we need to be um, practitioners of that. And so um, before we go on with today's activity, in the Q&A, if you have any questions related to just the core understanding of Ka'au, I would love to answer that. You know, how best should we um, um, I can ask them when they start to come in. I'll also yeah. post the um, link to the videos for review. 
uh, right. which also went out in the reminders, but just in case. <laughs> yeah, so you know, how old is storytelling? Well, storytelling, we can, we can, we have about a, the, the professionals, the anthropologists estimate that language is about 30,000 years old. And they know that storytelling and language, in fact, we've had, we began to, before language was formed, pre-language, we were telling stories through body language. And so storytelling is much older than, than, than our literacy today, you know, reading, writing much older than that we've been telling stories for greater than 30,000 years so what's in a story there's a lot of things in stories in fact let me read you some and you know you have a chat there can you add things what's in a story just throw what's the value of storytelling and just throw your experience in there but let me tell you what i you know what i was able to constellate um there's connection values and beliefs come through stories there's huge cultural culture that comes through stories knowledge and experiences come through stories strengths and fears comes through the stories hopes and aspirations there's injury and trauma healing and resilience it introduces equity. Stories allow us to under see another point of view, therefore somebody else's value system. Um, through stories, we communicate dreams and goals. We contribute to memory, recall, retention, integration. That's what stories do. They, they contribute to that. It gives insights. It, it requires imaginations. And, it, and imagination is important for vision building. Stories form opinions and affect and effect outcomes. The cause and effect of outcomes can largely be communicated through stories. Who wants to hear a lecture on the cause and effect of living? A story engages the listener a whole lot longer than a lecture. And um, I value lectures. I started off as a lecture, but then I realized uh, a lecture is like a PowerPoint with a human voice. I rather tell a story. So I've been telling stories throughout my whole profession uh, with some great outcomes. So I leave that there for you to think about. Um, stories, form opinions, affect effect outcomes, increases empathy, triggers mirror neurons. The ability to see oneself in somebody else's story, to mirror them, themselves. The oldest form of communication and experience sharing, transformative stories ask the question, why? Do I exist? In fact, many of us who are in the substance abuse healing world, that question or the lack of that question sometimes lead into those choices when people no longer feel that there's a reason for their, their existing. And so Ka'au, the big stories always puts that forward. Why do I exist? What's my call? What's my contribution? Yeah. Transformative stories um, are always about going beyond the norm, performing outside of mediocrity. So we, are, we attach the hero quest, the person that went beyond the norm, went into these huge battles and came back a hero. But that becomes an archetype model for us. And we, we, we communicate this through storytelling. And the great thing, Every indigenous and non-indigenous group in the world has hero stories. So it's not, storytelling is a language, it's a global language. Um, and if we know our dialect of it, we can easily support the dialect of others. Um, it educates, it edifies, it grows emotional literacy. Emotional literacy. I, I was like, oh, I like emotional literacy. I thought I came up with that term the other day, but when I Googled it, it was there. Some people have been writing about it for a while. So <sighs> influences and inspires. How many of you are in the profession because you're influenced or you're inspired? How did that influence inspiration come, come by you? Storytelling releases oxytocin. It, it, it's, the, it's the hormone that, is associated with social bonding. So the converse of it is we could limit social bonding 
when we remove the stories. And it goes on and on and on. And so, um, and interestingly, we remove stories. If storytelling does all that for us, why is it we have a difficult time sharing a story when we ask to share a story? Or why is it we're more comfortable sharing somebody else's stories and not our own because perhaps it's not developed or perhaps we don't value our stories. The stories that are in the book, those are the real stories. The stories that are in my body, uh, they're not as important. Ka'al allows those stories to come out. The Ka'al allows oneself to look in the mirror and says, hmm, my story is as, value, as valuable as Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings. Um, my story is just as meaningful as the religious the stories of the religious leaders who, by the way, their life story fits the, the Ka'al framework. They went beyond the norm. They gave birth to new considerations of how to live and how to exist and how to connect. So... Ka'au again has four, you know, nodes. The first one is the hua, you know, the, the catalyst, you know, the thing that gets you to, that motivates you. And it typically is triggered in your formative years. And for some of us, it, a little later. And then at the point in time where you say, okay, this is a calling that I need to step into. And then you step into it. That's the ha'alele, the point you depart and you begin to, and you begin to um, strategically get the ex enter into a, a field of experience to grow your calling. And then there's the huaka'i, the, the, the journey, the journey that, you know, the ups and downs of, of really becoming a master in this world of yours, this call of yours. And then the ho'ina, how valuable is your calling to the world you live in? to yourself and to your family and to your community. That's the whole, you know, the reintegration of your experience back into the community. And for indigenous um, systems, it, we place a lot of value on our contribution to community. That's what all indigenous people have in common worldwide. Oftentimes the value that they hold is reflected by the value in which that community holds them. And, um, and sometimes we get messed up in sort of the, um, the Eurocentric modern academic realm because they put so much attention on the development of the individual. By the time you enter kindergarten and preschool, you notice that you come in with stories and after a while those stories get replaced with stories in the textbook or somebody else's stories from around the world. And, and, and your stories are not are somehow forgotten or left out of the school bag. You don't take it to school anymore. And, um, and, you, and you get groomed on your individual, individual ability to, to um, learn and to recall the learning through te testing systems. And so what Ka'au is doing is saying, hey, there's nothing wrong with modern educational systems, but we got to better it. We cannot leave our stories home anymore. They have to inform each other. We have to bring our stories to the process. Uh, we cannot, we, in the community colleges, you know, there are thousands of community colleges. What's gonna make ours one unique? And that's the ability to, to use the human connection, using storyteller, storytelling in storytelling as a way of is a framework to put that whole degree that they're seeking into the advancement of their life. So as it relates to you, we'll be looking at storytelling with the framework of Ka'au and uh, we'll be looking at a couple of models. And then we want to we begin, we want you to see yourself in these models. And then some of these models might be even used by some of you as you begin to work with families or individuals. You know, um, and perhaps, you know, how do you bring the 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 vision back into the discussion, back into the narrative. How do you bring, um, you know, as part of the healing and the Hawaiian healing, it's not just healing what's wrong, but looking at the cause. And typically there's an imbalance of spirit. That's the root of all 
illnesses in our health world. There is an imbalance. And when we talk about spirituality, we talk about a disconnect or a connect, a profound connection. And an injured spirit is one that's lost connection, not lost connection to their themselves, to their community, to the to their to the to the to the larger people, to the larger community, and they lost their story. They're spinning, and they they spend lives upon lives, and, and it, trying out other people's stories, try using other people's narratives, and for some it works, for many it doesn't, and they begin again at block one. So that's a lot said. I want to share with you the first template. Can we call upon the template that's related to Princess Hawaii? Sure. We also have some responses in the chat to your prompt about what's in the story. Did you want me to read those? Or? I, I, um, as you pull it up, I can look through them. Okay. I saw somebody from Kahalu that always excites me. I hope the Kahalu you're talking about is the one like near Kameohe. <laughs> All righty. Now, Talking about the narrative, um, again, in our system, oftentimes our narrative, our personal narrative or the narrative of our families or the things we value have absolutely no play in the courses we gotta take. And sometimes even in higher education, we enter into a, uh, we enter into a degree because when we're told that's where the money is or maybe that's where the interest is, um, but we don't know how that interest is going to advance us. So, you know, we lose the narrative. And so we want to put, in my world, higher education, we want to put the higher education back within the context of, of one's life. Not one's life in the context of education, but education in the context of, of one's life. So I looked at, um, you know, and then some of our, our students, when they come, and some of our faculty, because their narrative has been sort of, um, they've been separated. There has been a separation out from personal narrative to the academic journey. When we ask them to bring their personal narratives to the table, they don't feel very well. They don't feel very good. They feel, um, they feel unaccomplished. Even if they have the academic accolades, they feel like, um, and for many of our students here at Hawaii Community College, on our island, we're 55% impoverished, which means most families don't have time to talk about stories and vision building, about the larger context of life. They're worried about how they're gonna feed their children, how they're gonna keep the bola head tire from popping because they don't have money to repair that. And if that one tire pops, poor people cannot go to work. That's what they're thinking about. So how do we get them to, again, consider knowing that that's where they come from, how do we get them to relook storytelling and see themselves in it? So oftentimes we start off with looking at somebody else's story as a way of warming, opening up the idea that, oh, maybe I have a story. And so um, we start from the outside and then we work in. Some people are, they can start right from the inside. This is my inner narrative and this is how it plays out in the world. For many of the people that I serve and perhaps you serve, when you ask them about their visions and their, their inner callings, they may not, they're dealing with, with health issues, substance abuse, family abuse, um, you know, but we got to get to the core of it, the heart of it. And storytelling can allow us a little bit more entrance into that. Um, so we start off with, um, I just looked up Kamehameha schools and I said, hmm, let's look at Kamehameha School. I will let me let me plop Kamehameha Schools into this ka'au. So here you have the hua, the ha'alele, the hua ka'ia, the ho'ina. But let's start with the ho'ina because some people cannot start with the hua. And this may be some of you folks. You may not be comfortable starting with the hua. It might be underdeveloped. You may not know it. But what you're doing today, that's the ho'ina. Your profession you have. That's your service back to your community. So we can start with the Ho'ina here. And the Ho'ina of Kamehameha Schools is that 69,000 students are currently being enrolled and 40,000 are, 40, are being served, okay? That's what Kamehameha Schools is contributing to this world. And by the way, 
most Hawaiians, there, there's a larger minority, a, a larger number of Hawaiians living outside of Hawaii than we have in Hawaii. So the, the, the outcomes of Kamehameha School is now affecting the world. We can assume that. Now, what was the Huaka'i? So we're working backwards. This is what they're doing now, but how were they able to, to get there? And um, this is where the, the princess comes in where she, because she had no children of her own. And so what she did was, and she knew that um, the, world, the, the world of Hawaii was changing so fast that people were spiraling out of control. Um, they were losing their narrative. There was a time of being blurred and confused. The intermarriage, which is the intermarriage of value systems, you know, the value systems were, were, um, were evolving. And so she knew that education, no matter the, the flux of being modern, that education will give people an opportunity to ground themselves again. So she put most of her resources, majority of her resources into the establishment of the Kamehameha schools. Praha'alele, at what point did she actually begin to do that? Well, it was when she was uh, 52 years old. Um, there was only 44,000 Native Hawaiians left. And, um, and that, was, that was scary for her as an ali'i. Uh, ali'i are our nobles, our chiefs. Um, and she, this is Princess Pauahia. Um, and why did she feel that it was her kuleana to do something about it? Because sometimes we can see stuff happening, but it's not our kuleana, so we move beyond it. But why didn't she move beyond it? You know that some of our ali'i actually moved to the mainland and moved to Europe. They exited the, nar the, the, the narrative of the lahui. There's, uh, is there fault in that? I don't think that's necessary to see if there's fault or not. It's just that there were choices. And Princess Pauahi's choice was not to vacate, but to do something about it. And, um, and that was triggered, that coming to call the no exit option, that was triggered in her rearing, her hua. She comes from a noble birth, a noble function where the, the, the ideal ali'i is the person that serves as the conduit between resources and the spirit of the, the community. They stay behind and they do something about it. And so this is the ka'au of Princess Pauahi. Most of us know, oh yeah, Kamehameha schools, they're rich, they're for Hawaiians, but there is a narrative behind that. And maybe her story can reflect some of our things. I'm sure sometimes we want to option out. In fact, that's some of the things we were working on because some of our students, they get educated and then they don't want to get home. They want to stay in Hilo because Hilo is a great place for their spirit. So they don't want to go home and we have to figure out how to make going home an outcome of the program. Go home and do something about, take your education and do something about your community. So this is, I hope that you can see yourself in this, your photo, your name, your story, because okay, that's where we're gonna go. Can we show another one? Uh, the next one is on the on Tangaro. Okay, so this is the same template, but this is my story. And because I have many stories, as you do, I don't have one story, we have plural stories. That plurality of stories allow us to, to uh, relate to other people. If we only had one story, that would be quite limited, don't you think? So this one, this particular angle, I, I had to create an instrument to make a point. So I, I just like, okay, I'm gonna look at one of my stories and that's, my, my, my need to connect. That's a value of mine. It's a trait of mine. It's, uh, I was designed, I was hardwired that way, I guess at conception. I love connection. And when connection doesn't exist, I have a difficult time moving forward. Now, 
I started my Hoina. I, I'm an educator. Um, and then I actually use stories to connect professionals to their students, therefore to their families and communities, because you know, we still have some professors, not much, but we still have some dinosaurs that come from um, the old world and we honor the dinosaur, yeah, because we learn a lot from them. But they come from the old world where your life has no room in this space. I have a curriculum of 17 weeks to get a curriculum down through to you and, and you're either gonna make it or not. You know, that narrative is changing. That attitude is becoming um, obsolete. For us to better service our, our students, we have to know where they come from, what is their story of the community, and where do they expect to go? And that's what's gonna make higher education different. Um, because now it's not about just getting the degree, it's about knowing your life and seeing how that degree goes. How is that degree going to advance your life? So this is what I do. I actually use storytelling in my profession. And hula was a natural way of, of you know, creating a hula degree, was a way of getting people not to just learn choreography, but learn about how to become better people, better parents, better students, better agents for change, for well-being. Okay. Um, all the work that I do in, in committee work at the university, I sit there and I actually, when people are talking and showing their PowerPoints, sometimes I'm a little bit dyslexic because I'm not paying attention to what's coming out of their mouth more than I'm reading the energy that's coming out of their body. Oftentimes we base a relationship solely on what the MQs and the DQs, you know, the, the minimum qualifications and the desirable qualifications, they get you the job. We base our professional dialogue on that ah, that's recent. I want to know the 30,000-year-old story behind you. I want to know what makes you tick, what makes you advance, what sets you back, what's your values. I got to figure you out so that I can connect and then um, so that we can move on the agenda because then we don't connect. There's, the agenda gets tabled and tabled and tabled and you, and you wonder, why am I even here? So that's my whole, you know, my huakai, I found myself in higher education because it had an, it got me to connect. In a traditional world, oftentimes we, we learn how to do this, we learn how to do that, we learn how to sing, dance, we learn how to think Hawaiian, do Hawaiian, and even if we're, we're immigrants, we learn how to live Hawaiian. But oftentimes we don't know why. Academia gave us an opportunity to inquire why, why is this sacred? Why must we keep it? Why should we evolve it? Why should we put it to sleep because it's not working? So academia, I found myself relishing this academic journey because it, 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 it gave me more power to connect to myself and to those around me. My Ha'alele, um, at age eight, I was taken to learn hula. And again, this is all storytelling. Storytelling as the glue for connecting. And at age eight, I was taken to learn hula. And what is hula? Hula is a dance of stories. And you know, in Hawaii, we like to dance the most ancient stories. We dance about the kumulipo, our origin stories. We dance about the, the chiefs, pre-contact, post-contact. You know, the modern Hawaiian world, the futuristic Hawaiian world. Hula is about dancing a narrative and so it that so hula was not just something i did and and connecting was something i felt they they were able to come together one supported the other now how did connection become a, a primary trait of mine it goes back to my childhood and this is when I just, again, I was hardwired to, I was that kind of child that really liked sitting with the old people and listening to their stories. And when they told their stories, I felt connected. I felt connected to a time before me. And so it made sense to go to Hula because I felt connected to people before me and people after me. 
it made sense to go to the University of Hawaii because they gave me the words and articulations and the justification and the rationale to support and advance that. And of course, coupling all that together, I'm able to do what I do here at the university. I did see a hand go up. Did a hand go up? No? Um, next template. So I hope you see yourselves in here because that's where we're heading. We're gonna replace the picture of the name and the narrative. And this template are for those that, um, you know, they don't wanna share their story. Some of you are not, you know, you're, it's not your culture to share something so personal. And see, the great thing is we can honor that. We have to share something. That's gonna, we have to have many things. So we can share something. So this next template are really designed for perhaps those that um, are not, they take a little bit more time to share their story. And so I, the previous two, ka'au, at a glance, that means if you have an opportunity to glance, you can look at, in a glance, you can see someone's story. You saw the one of Pauahi and you saw the one of mine. This one is, we're gonna do ka'au at a blink. And this is for those that have only, one, they don't like share this story, but they gotta share something. And they might have only a little bit of time. Um, so what they wanna do is share, the, why don't you share your profession? Because your profession is public knowledge. And so why don't you share something, um, you know, use the ka'au to share something that you're okay with people knowing about you. So this is my ka'au in a blink. Okay. And that's actually me in 1963. Just as old as this shirt. <laughs> um, next, next slide, please. This is a one pager, guys. And um, again, where it began, going to college was never a family discussion. My college catalyst happened at age 19 when I was in a halal where everybody was either a teacher or a dancer. So you see, one of my stories is about connection and I use connection in my profession. This one is about my journey in, in the profession. How did I become a professor in this and do that? My ha'alele began in 1883 when I came to specifically learn Hawaiian language. I was not a degree seeker. I didn't know about degrees, but I knew that coming to college was the space that could teach me to speak Hawaiian. Okay, I could dance Hawaiian, think Hawaiian, add phrases and words, but I couldn't really converse. And I wasn't gonna option out of that one. My huaka'i, and that's my, that's my huaka'i there, that's all the, and in a huaka'i, you see the word hua again, the hua, the catalyst. In a journey, there are multiple journeys. One journey gives birth to many journeys. So that's where some of you are gonna get hung up on. You know, I mean, my huaka'i, but other huas are being triggered. That's the odyssey to, to, to look at the Greek myth, ka'au. That's the odyssey of, of this beautiful world of ka'au that we live in. And then my ho'ina, as a, um, going through this journey, um, I may, this is what I do. So this is ka'au at a blink. So for those of you who are uncomfortable sharing your personal stories, or you may not have time to share your personal stories, but you gotta share something, why don't you, sh why don't you put your profession within the framework of ka'au? And you know what? You're gonna begin relating anew to it. You begin to make connections, okay? Um, the template, please. Now, again, the whole focus on this coming together is to actually develop a personal and professional connection. So we're beginning to use this the template to framework your story yeah, as, a, as a stepping block. So this is what we want you to do. We want you to find a photo of yourself. You know, this is a place where you have the photo of your dog, the photo of your, your cat, your flowers, your car, perhaps, your, you know, uh, it might 
limit how far your story can go. And you know, it's like this person I meet, you know, in um in the in some you know space she comes, she goes, Oh, I'm your FB friend. And I'm thinking, I don't know your face. She goes, Oh yeah, because it's my dog. So you know, um, we wanna we wanna use this opportunity to make connections to humans. Yeah. And later on we can we can tuck the dog in our journey story. Okay, that's where our our loving our our love animal can 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 contribute to our story. But see yourself here. Whether you want to do a ka'au at a, at a glance, which means you're going to disclose a little bit more about who you are, why you feel the way you are, um, or perhaps why you're um, why you are in the healing work. And education is healing. So there was a lot of Hawaii.edu people here also. So you know, education is healing. It's not just this rational application and acquisition of a degree. Many indigenous people get educated because we need to reestablish our narrative that went a little blurry because of colonization, wrongful occupation, or sometimes our ancestors just made the best decisions a hundred years ago that was really good for them, but we need to make different kinds of decisions today uh, because we have perhaps different kinds of needs. So I want you to see yourself in this photo or in this template, your name and Ka'aura glance. Yes, this is for sharing. You know how when you go into your office, you have your certification there? Oh yeah, I'm certified by so-and-so, you know, and so for some of you it's required. Well, wouldn't it be a beautiful thing that alongside that certification, you have your ka'au right there and it informs your, the person you're servicing of the human person behind that certification. Who's the human being and what's their story? What's her story? What's his story? Who's servicing me? Why are you even servicing me? Um, that's actually a um, very indigenous way of introducing oneself. Sometimes our teachers that come from the outside world and they come away, they get a little bit offended when the student go, why teacher, who you? What's your name? Where are you from? Sometimes that's like too personal. That's like personal. It doesn't matter. Uh, of course it matters. If we're going to allow a human to participate in how we think, to build new, new opinions, to, to analyze what we did right and what we did wrong, we better know your name and where you're from and, and why you're here. We don't only want to know your certification. A robot can be certified. We need to know the human being. That's the great thing about Ka'au. It, Ka'au today, it reminds us that we're human beings behind the certifications, behind the policies. And for us to, to, to contribute to the healing work, we have to begin to and we can use stories as a way of, of figuring out, well, who are these people? Where are they are from? Who's this person sitting in my room? And before you get straight to the diagnosis, you gotta figure out their story. Why did they get there in the first place? Um, so we want you to, to see yourself in this. Um, and then if some of you don't wanna share, you know, you're not ready to share that part of your narrative, then just plop in your professional credentials there. Let the person know that you have that you have a reason for being here. This is your hua. That you, in, on this date and time, you entered into the, you committed to that hua. And your hua ka'i, this is where you got your experience. And then your hua So you see, it's another kind of certification. It's using stories to certify and to complement not to replace your credentials, but to complement because credentials alone is not helpful in all situations. We need to have the human story there. Our people need to know that some of the people that are helping them really know their story really well because they had a similar story, not the exact one, but people who are 
you know, um, technicians in the rehabilitation of substance abuse oftentimes experience substance abuse. And when they're successful, it allows, it gives it, that's what stories do, it, it flashes a particular ideal, a particular hope, a particular image that people can remind themselves that they can strive for. Alrighty, those are the templates. Uh, I wanna save enough time for question and answer. And, but before we do, next week, we're gonna reconverge. Next week, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna break, we're gonna put you into random breakout groups. I don't know if random, I just put in that word. We're gonna put you in breakout groups. How you get there is gonna be, we'll figure that one out. Um, and because you come from different fields of healing, um, sometimes it might be great to have a diverse group in these breakouts. Another thing we're going to do is we want you to bring to this breakout group a story that you're willing to share, whether it's ka'au at a glance or ka'au in a blink. Share, share something. Have a discussion. Um, Another thing that we're beginning to, and uh, we're beginning, and, it, and I'm Karmahalo Lenoy and, and the Papaola Lokahi platform because they got me to, to even grow one more consideration in this Ka'au movement. And that is how do we use Ka'au not to just rationally plot our life and our current condition in the framework, but how do we use Ka'au? to play around with other visions, other outcomes. What if, like I said, what if the road we're on, we're hitting, it's not working, the canoe cannot go any further. So what you can do, you're not gonna, you know, in a car not moving, you know, you might have to reconsider another way of transportation. What you don't wanna do is spend a life pushing the car sideways down the road. You know, if that's not going to work, then we've got to figure out another form of transportation. So in those cases when people don't know what they want to do with their lives or their lives have been just so bust up and they don't want to go back there. So how do we use the ka'au to help them frame another consideration, another story, to start from the hua all over again, a new narrative? And that's exactly what you do to help people create a new platform and take their traumas and turn it into tools and experiences for advancement. Not, not ignore the trauma, but incorporate it, in, in sublimate it, so that now that becomes the actual tool that advances you. The trauma becomes your strength and you're more proficient in, 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 in that discussion than I am. But I do know in my little story world that um, there is a trauma in many of the students we serve. And, um, and when they have an indication that you too went through a trauma, they begin to listen. They begin to lean, lean in. They begin to linger. They want to hear more of how you came out of that trauma. Not just talk about the successes. Sometimes they need to know the trauma, revisit the trauma when the time is right, and then turn and take that moment of the journey and create tools that will advance. Heroes have huge traumas. That's the whole thing about a, 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 a national myth is the traumas is what we're addicted to. Like, wow, how did they come out of it? That's what we need. We need to have an opportunity and we need to have your experiences to help us come out of it. And so, um, yeah, let's look at next week. Okay, so next week is when we want you to bring your story. Okay, share something. Now, I have 30 minutes I put aside. It's 12 o'clock. We're done at 12.30. There's going to be a little bit, uh, you know, it's maybe 12.25. There's going to be some little closing announcements. So now this is for you. I would like for you to ask questions. I would like for you to, um, you know, to give ideas. Um, 
you know, I had to contribute something to this university system because education is transformative. And I found that Ka'au is about transformation, coming out of point A into, and evolving into point B. And so it works. So how can this Ka'au complement what you're doing, clarify what you're doing, or validate what you're doing? Mahalo. So it's um, that everyone put their thoughts in the Q&A, put your questions or comments, questions in the Q&A and then comments in the chat. Uh, we did have one question come in about your quote in the beginning, when we hug our mo'opuna. Yeah. When we um, if you could repeat it because they were too busy crying to write it down. <laughs> oh. I, I ironed my shirt. Why were you crying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, this is where we got to reclaim, you know, we got to look at our oldest stories because our older stories take us back to a place that's less confused. Um, we're all born in, in post-statehood. Well, many of us are born, not all, some of us are born in post-statehood. So when we were, by the time we were born, Hawaii was a different kind of Hawaii. And whenever we learned about, you know, fourth grade and eighth grade, you learn about Hawaii, Hawaiiana. Those were, they were censored curricula to promote Americanization. All colonized communities go through that. The, the, the education is censored. The language is replaced, the narrative is replaced, and you know, it's to promote a new ideal. And so everything we learn about Hawaiian was in the past tense. Our ancestors were so smart. That tells us that they're no longer smart. Our people in the old days were so artistic. That tells us that we're no longer artistic. You know, everything is in the past tense. And then, you know, when you dance hula, something happens. You take a past tense narrative and you, 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 you bring it into the current tense. When you dance hula and you do it correctly, it's timelessness. There's no date. It's a once upon a time moment because we, those stories recycle themselves. And the kings and the queens and the gods and the goddesses are present on the stage in the room. So... When I started having grandchildren, you know, I started holding them. And, you know, of course, you, you know, a grandparent, you have a grandchild and you see that, oh, they inherited the dimple on your chin or the, uh, your, your big eyes. You know, you just start looking for what is yours. What did I contribute to this grandchild? And then, you know, in the, all the, the, those undesirable traits start to come up you say oh yeah you get that from your grandmother's side you know you know how we do it but you know when I started to hold my grandchildren and for some reason I didn't get it when I was holding my own children I was too busy being a parent but I think when I was a when I became a grandparent and I began holding my grandchildren because my grandparents held me well they in them I was I felt security so it was natural for me to hold my grandchildren we give them ancestral names. You named after your grand. You know, we, we have the genealogy, but still we inform them that it's a past tense. And I said, oh, no, 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 no. We gotta, re we gotta. It's when we give our ans our grandchildren our ancestor's name, and when we hold that child with the ancestor's name, we're holding that ancestor. The ancestor is in the body, so that yes, ancestors are behind us. But not all the time. Sometimes our ancestors are right here. And so, you know, when you treat those ancestors really well, your children will be treated really well. And when you treat your children really well, your ancestors will be treated really well because they're indivisible. So hug your ancestor. Anything else? Uh -huh. Yes, there's a bunch of stuff in the chat. One sec. So we have a lot of the comments that came in um, in regard to the what is in a story. Um, yeah. 
which I'll, I'll just kind of read through. And then there, there was a few more uh, questions that came in as well. So uh, for me, stories capture the attention and allow me to journey through with those in the story. It grabs my attention. It's an excellent way to share values and shape sustained culture. Um, another one says, lesson, lesson stress, knowing others have or had been through what we have and are still here. Um, another comment says, it heals and it also builds mana for self and community. Um, another comment, stories, especially those of our ohana, preserve and perpetuate. Uh, another one, stories help me to understand our participants and look at the underlying cause of the behavior versus just looking at the behaviors and the connection before correction. And um, different models for pro antisocial behavior, leadership and leadership transition, ideals, exceptions, decision-making processes, self and self-reflection. Uh, another comment of, um, I think this was in regard to why people um, are having, may have trouble sharing their stories as maybe judgment or insecurities. Another stories allow people to connect and pay attention. It helps one to retain information and relate so they can pass it on to others. Um, and then we have some comments uh, regarding just your most recent questions. Uh, one is I work with traumatized veterans. I start my own story at the beginning uh, of the beginning in the military with a deployment. It helps the veterans to drop their walls a little. Vets don't always trust non-vets. The commonality helps to build connection. And my boss always did this. And then, I, can, I, can I add to that one? Sure, of course. I think, um, you know, how the ka'al can work with that. You know, you tell your story, they tell your story, and, they, and it opens the door for them to advance their story, you know, into the room. But really even ask them, you know, why did you even enter into this profession? You know, oftentimes we enter into a profession because we think we can do something about it. Um, so, you know, sometimes people go into the service because they've been groomed for it. And so it's not enough that they've been groomed for it because when they get injured, they don't know where to put, they don't know who the triggers were. But, you know, have them look at what was the greater, you know, what was the big reason they went and remind them of, you know, their, their hero quest. The reason why they entered into this service. This is a huge Human, talk about human sacrifice. That's an, that's, an un, that's an uncomfortable discussion, but that's exactly what our veterans are. They go in, they go into this huge journey. There's a hua, you know, they, the, the grooming begins and then they, 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 there's a ha'alele, they actually, be, they enter into, then there's the journey and then some of them come back great some of them never come back physically. They just come back in memories and in, in, in the families that, that uh, left behind. And then a number of them come back injured. But sometimes if the injury is, is the focus, then that will require a particular kind of approach. But we found that sometimes I want to remind people, again, why did you even enter into this field? And remind them of the hero quest that they were, this was a huge service, it might give them someplace else to rest their anxiety, that you know, it was indeed a choice. And, and, and here is an injury, and, but my reason for this injury was a huge service to the community. And it might, we found that um, when we speak to veterans or, or other people that service, especially on the front edge, you know, the health, you know, the people that risk their lives daily. When we, we take them all the way back to their childhood and why did they even consider it, it relaxes their anxiety. It allows them to come to a discussion a little bit more whole. And, um, and so maybe that's where the ka'au really, really works. We're actually looking to put, take the ka'au process into um, the incarceration, the communities, the incarcerated communities, and to see people, their lives in the larger context and not just what they did wrong and therefore getting punished for. But there's a bigger picture. That's just one piece of their, their story. Thank you.
Mahalo, I love that. I think there is, there's so much potential for this in incarceration, especially. Um, Aloha from Arizona, love how Tongaro teaches. Being a kupuna pretty much raised all my life on the continent. I love that he confirms so much that I have felt and believed forever. Um, mahalo piha ikumu tangaro. If I wanted to reference ka'au in an academic journal, where can I find resources? Well, you know what you're going to do is when you get ka'au, you're going to get the story. Um, you're not going to necessarily get the, um, the transformative properties of it and how, you know, how do you use it. And we haven't, ka'au has, is a huge movement. It's moving in the university system. It's gone beyond just Hawaii Community College. Um, and that's why Ka'au is anchored in the president's domain because it's becoming uh, one of the tools used to indigenize the university setting or the in to indigenize higher education in Hawaii. So where do you resource them from? It's still being stewarded by human beings. So you only will, in, in this point in time, you'll be getting primary resourcing through me, through people like Lily Noy, who actually went through the, the training. So. You know, academia, we put a lot of value on primary resourcing. Well, the creators of Ka'al, the framework for transformation, we're still alive. We're not dead yet. So if you need to resource people, you can just contact us. Um, otherwise, you know, or you can look into the, the Jungian practices. I um, mean, you know, if you're looking for the more um, academic, clinical um, discussions on... Um, on uh, mythology as a as a healing platform, you can look at and you know you can look into those scholars. You know Carl Jung um, has informed a lot this process. He's not the reason for the process. He's just he's just sort of um, supported and per perhaps provided you know those missing links. Sometimes we inherit most of the story. We just need missing links. Um, the, or links to be replaced. And some people have those links from different parts of the world and, and who would refuse them, okay? Um, also, I've, I put in um, a couple of quotes that I use. Um, one of them here is, um, even in the spinning of a tale, truth can be found a, a little frazzled, perhaps, but still adhering nonetheless. <clears throat> this is those, I have to remind myself that sometimes when I'm dealing with students and or professionals, <laughs> they might begin telling me a story or spinning a story that is not necessarily their truth. Um, and sometimes they do it unconscious and sometimes they do it consciously because they don't have a better story to tell. So, you know, not to disregard that because it is a truth. You just, we have to just respond to it a little differently. So even when they're outrightly telling falsehood, you know, false falsities, there's some truth in there. And so we don't want to just cross it off. We want to pay attention to that. Because that's one of the things, as soon as you go to school and you tell a story, you say, stop telling untruths. Stop spinning a story. To tell a story is now become equates to telling non-truths. Telling a story is a way of telling a truth. And I think because we've neglected to hear people's stories, people get lost. They don't, so when you ask them, what's your story? They don't know. So we have to stop telling our mo'opuna, stop telling a story. We actually have to encourage them, tell a story. The other one is um, a storyteller. Where is it called? A storyteller is both victor and victim, and sometimes villain. A victor in that the storyteller has an opportunity to speak her own voice. That's a big thing for many of our people. Just to share your truth. You know how many people out there, nobody cares about their story, so they don't care about their story and they're lost. So it's a, you become a victor you, 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 when you can share that story. And for some of us, we become a victim. Because when we share a story, we inform the audience, the listening ear of our own weaknesses. And sometimes people might take advantage of our own weaknesses. So, you know, it is a very delicate space. And so most people don't want to share their stories because they don't want to be victimized again. But the other thing is, um, 
you also become a villain. When you share your story, you become a villain, sometimes to your own narrative, because now you begin to ask the question, why? That is the, the atom of transformation. Why? Why do I got to think like this? Why do, I, why do I act like this? Why do I have to say this? You know, we have, we've inherited so much why you got to do it. We, now we want to question why are we doing it? And is it working? Okay. Um, so I threw in a couple of, um, you know, I threw in a couple of quotes there, you know, that even in trauma, rainbows arch in the proficiency of a storyteller. So a storyteller has an ability to just change climate change energy okay um back to you i know kind of so um uh another comment came in i like how you highlighted the importance of each individual story also i like how you highlight the importance of word choice and how a few words can make a huge difference mahalo nui tangaro one of my desires is to help our women tell their stories your strategy is the perfect tool to help me do that as well as help me to me to do the same I look forward to the rest of this recording. Um, you know, the great thing about telling, the great thing about Ka'au is that we deliberately reduce, um, I, I don't want, I don't have another word, so in a word choice and I, I'm short on words, but reduce the blame. Ka'au actually puts people in the context of their, they're the, they're the, they're the steersmen, they're the captain of their journey. So Ka'au takes the narrative that a person is living in, oftentimes that narrative is formed by someone else, but says, hey, that narrative is, you know, that's one narrative, that's one story. Don't lose it because there's a lot of information in that narrative. Don't lose your past. Don't try to hide it. Don't blur it. Don't erase it. Keep it. You don't have to read it every day. It doesn't have to be a book of choice. But when you need to reflect on it, you should have access to those, to those experiences. Never get rid of an experience. Just put it in a right shelf in that library of yours. And then, now let's create your story. Uh, and, you know, and I'm speaking from uh, a mother who raised us, the experience of living um, on, with a single parent who was a mother who had me at 16 and had seven kids every year after that. And so oftentimes I was growing up with her. She and I were growing up together. And, um, but, you know, oftentimes, you know, we hear her story. We hear always somebody else's story as it defines, oh, she uses other people's definition of who she is. She uses other people's narrative, you know, they impose their narrative on her. So, you know, um, it takes a while. It took her years to actually say, mom, yeah, mm, yeah, that's daddy's story or that's grandpa's story. What's your story? And I think that's a great thing with Ka'au. It relieves oftentimes attention we have for other people and what they've done to us and what we've done to them. And it gives us a clean template begin a new story not to erase the old but not just to focus on it yeah we need more stories so we can focus on the right things that we need we don't want to only have one story oh just like going to the luau and you're forced to eat only one item we like choices yeah <laughs> um okay mahalo piha for sharing this healing framework that is so relevant to the work we do as healers the most available community resource in Hawaii for people recovering from substance use disorders is 12-step recovery, is grounded in uncovering, discovering, and sharing the individual's personal stories as a conduit for healing. What a beautiful way to reframe this concept from a cultural lens, as always in our culture. Aoahu aumai, as healers we teach and learn. And I'm going to jump over to the Q&A uh, section. So I found in my work that for some cultures, storytelling and finding out more about people. So technology everywhere, right? <laughs> um, I found in my work that for some cultures, storytelling and finding out more about me is extremely helpful and culturally appropriate before we start our clinical work. Because we are driven, we because we are research driven in psychology, will there be studies and outcomes conducted or available to inform our work? 
um, Kalamai, I know that is a foreign concept, but it is part of my work. Oh, no, 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 no. Evaluation, proof, that is not foreign. That is very Hawaiian. In fact, in Hawaii, in our pigeon, we say, why? What proof? We like proof. Show us proof. Because if you cannot show us proof, we would call that person waha, which was considered, waha means your mouth. It means, um, and it's, it's offensive to be referred to as a person with just waha. So finding the, the empirical evidence that Ka'au is making changes is where we're at now. We're collecting data. Um, and there's different ways of asking the question. You know, typically we, we, we actually moved into Ka'au. Interestingly, the university system moved into Ka'au not from an empirically based reasons. We moved into it because it felt right. When people picked it up, they felt whole. You know, they were like, wow, this feels so right. And that's really odd for academia because, you know, we want to get the, the, the assessment instrument first. Yeah, we have a, a, a hypothesis and then we're going to, you know, what is the, the, the methodology? We, we create all that and then we move into the, the experience. But the Ka'au is interesting. We began moving into the Ka'au and now assessment is trying to catch up. So we will be building um, uh, assessment, uh, assessment base that will help give the proof. And so you see right now we have four verses. Yeah, we have the hua, the beginning, the ha'alele, the point you enter to the journey, you commit to the journey, the huaka'i, the journey, and the ho'ina, your return and your integration of your experience into the community. There's a fifth one, and that is called the ha'ina. So like ha'ina, you know, many, at the end of many of our songs, we have the ha'ina verse. And that ha'ina is the echo. The ha'ina is a big message. What is this song really, what is the most important thing about this song? What is the most important thing about this story? Uh, and so we're looking to develop that. And that's, that's the haina is where we put all the assessment. We put all the empirical evidence because this cannot just be a feeling movement. We have to be able to assess it and measure it. And we have the tools. Um, we're just having to now figure out how to ask the right questions so that we can get the right data. And that's part of it is this um, pre and post um, survey that you have to do. We just want to begin to measure simply as a result of being in these trainings, where are you on the board? You start here and where are you now? What could you possibly use? And what are some of your contributions or ideas to, to, to bring this further? So uh, yeah, it's not a foreign concept. Assessment is very much indigenous. In fact, it's even more cruel sometimes. So you know in the Lauhala weavers, the old tutu come and teach you, oh tutu, I want to learn to make Lauhala. And she tell you, are you sure? Yeah, I want to make a hat. Oh, I just admire you. You just made it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She, you make that, you learn, and you make, make, make. And the tutu, when you pow, they look them up. And if the, that, how, that hat you made is not very good, some of the old tutus actually throw it in the fire. So there because they don't want to, you never learn good enough and they never teach you good enough. So what they do, they remove that, that evidence and you begin again. So, you know, so assessment is, is, is part of the indigenous process and we need it for this movement. Okay, we have time for one more question and then I'll do our closing announcement. So on the topic of vulnerability and power of stories, can you say a little bit on how to make it safe for people to share stories? How do we receive stories so that people feel heard and are not re-traumatized? Oh yeah, we don't want to re-traumatize. In fact, when this ka'au started to take movement, there were a lot of um, faculty and staff that came to it because they found that their own, they began to, through the Ka'al framework, they began to revisit why they're actually in the profession. Because interestingly, you enter the profession and then a few years, you get burned out, you lose connection, you feel used, high turnover, or worse than a high turnover is you stay there disgruntled and you make everybody's life miserable around you. And then you begin to develop toxins that fuel diseases. Okay. So people began to come to this ka'au 
because they began to remember and recover the very fresh moments when it began the profession. So the Ka'au has a, has a nice way of reminding people why you're here in the first place. You may have gotten off mark, but let's get, there's nothing wrong with the profession. We just got to get you, you got to get yourself, your canoe back on course. The reason why you entered the profession. Okay. With that said, some of our faculty were so excited that they were going to use the 17 weeks to untraumatize their learners. <laughs> and was like, oh, one, there's Title IX, there's all these other kinds of accountabilities. We cannot, we cannot ask any kind of questions. And um, we cannot, the course, the classroom is to some degree a controlled environment, but to other degrees, it is not controlled enough where people can begin to share their traumas and the facilitator is not skilled in getting them, getting the traumas back into the box, getting it back. You know, they don't want to, anybody can open the Pandora's box. And, and that, and you know, and somebody sharing their trauma could trigger somebody else's trauma. And before you know it, you have a classroom of traumatized people and you've used Ka'au to injure them and not advance them. So Ka'au can be like any instrument. You know, you have to understand your community and, and, and your capacity and also work within. Some of those courses have nothing to do with trauma. That's not the purpose of the course. You know, so we had to begin to, um, we want the students, the teachers to reach and, and make opportunity for students to share their stories, but you have to create a safe space. So one is make storytelling a norm in the course. So it's not a, you know, it's not a, an odd random activity, but storytelling is a norm. It becomes normalized in the course by sharing by first, if in the world of academia, the course, and then finding the stories, you know, that, 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 that complements that course or advances that course. And then, you know, you, so you cannot just create stories here, the courses here, they have to come here and then tell your own stories. You know, why are you here? Why are you, uh, why are you a, um, an advisor? Well, you know, and, and maybe because that's, maybe it's advising, of course, I'm advising. So you begin with telling your story and maybe begin telling stories of other advisors that um, have inspired you. So normalize the process so that, and then begin sharing your own and then setting up, you have to set up a, the criteria by which people share. So if people don't want to share their personal stories, they can share their professional goals or even their envisioning maybe their life is just too bust up or unarticulated um, yet you know many people coming to college they haven't articulated their lives they've been busy living you know so maybe their lives aren't articulated yet so you know share other stories and then work inward but you have to build that criteria you have to that the housekeeping rules when people share their stories you know this is how you show respect you know, so you have to create the culture of storytelling. You cannot just pick the story framework and just plop it and expect it to work. You got to treat it like a lab. There's strong criteria by which this experiment, this experience will unfold. Um, and the stronger the criteria, the more supportive the criteria, the more willingly people will share. Mahalalui. Um, so just in our final minute here, I'd like to just take a, a moment to um, mahalo Tangaro for sharing all of this awesomeness today. <laughs> um, I'm so piha right now. Like I just, I feel, yeah, so so nourished by all of this, um, Ike. And I'm excited to fill out my uh, template and bring it on the next session. So mahalo nui for, for sharing today and for, for being with us on this journey and, and taking us on this journey. Mahalo nui. Um, and I just want to go ahead and wrap up today. I've posted in the chat the evaluation, which you'll be auto-directed to afterward, um, but just in case you're on your phone or something, um, I'll also send it in the follow-up emails. 
Um, so I want to remind you to join us uh, for our next session, which is on August 26th. And that will be on proficiency, uh, creating for all anchored activities, both personal and professional. Um, and if you're unable to join us for any of the sessions, just please also just remember to register so that you'll be sent the, the recording. You can still access that, access our evaluation. Um, and we also have just added a question on there um, to get an understanding of what would help to support your growth of this Ka'o journey for yourself, either personally or professionally, trying to get an idea of how to um, maintain this learning, how to create sustainability and, and continued growth and the potentiality for how we could use this both personally and professionally. So please write all of your thoughts in that area and I'll be um, pouring through it very um, eagerly. I hope everybody is excited is as excited as I am. <laughs> um, I'll repost the link to register for the remainder of our sessions. Um, and then after you log off today, you'll be redirected to the evaluation form. Um, don't forget if you need the continuing education credits to fill out that attendance verification. And then I'll just quit everyone for joining us today. Um, please enjoy the rest of your day. Aoi ho no kako.